Hi, this is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry. Join me now in the study of God's Holy Word. I would like to start this teaching with a quote from McClintock and Strong Cyclopedia. This is what it said. We are exhorted to acquire the perfection of Christianity both in theory and practice. We are to be thoroughly instructed and experienced in divine principles, to be adults and not children in Christian knowledge. We are to press onward to the attainment of the perfection of a Christian life by submission to the reign of the Holy Spirit, which brings the entire man into complete submission to the divine will. Now, in response to this quote, I would like to ask you some questions. Are you acquiring the perfection of Christianity both in theory and practice? Are you thoroughly instructed and experienced in divine principles? Are you an adult and not a child in Christian knowledge? Are you pressing onward to the attainment of the perfection of Christian life by submitting to the reign of the Holy Spirit who seeks to bring your entire being into submission to the divine will? If not, why not? Now, in this video, we are starting our new series for Walking in Truth Ministry for 2024, and it's based on the theme, Let Us Go On Unto Perfection, which is taken from the first part of Hebrews 6, 1, which says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now, our main text for today's message will be found in Hebrews 6, 1 through 3, which says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and of eternal judgment. And this will we do, if God permits. Now, before getting into this teaching, I would like to share with you two quotes. One is from Adam Clark. This is what he said. Let us go on unto perfection. Let us never rest till we are adult Christians, till we are saved from all sin and are filled with the spirit and power of Christ. Now, he is not advocating sinless perfection. He is saying that we should strive to be free from all sin in this life. And then the pulpit commentary goes on to say, it is sinful to remain only a babe in Christ and to have no wish to grow. Now, I want you to pay attention to that, to what they're saying here. It is sinful to remain only a babe in Christ and to have no wish to grow. Note that to leave the first principles does not mean to abandon them. Rather, we are to leave them as a tree leaves its root and yet never lets it go. As a full-grown man leaves slops for solid food and yet does not abjure the use of milk, as a building leaves its foundation and yet rests its whole weight upon it. When the foundation principles are once securely laid, that work should be regarded as settled and done with. What remains 
is to proceed with the superstructure. Okay, so we're getting to our main text, Hebrews 6, 1, which says, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Now, as I was studying and preparing for this message, the Holy Spirit seemed to zero in on certain words, and those words are, on one side, we have leaving, the word leaving. On the other side, we have let us go on unto perfection. Okay, so on one side, you have leaving. On the other side, you have let us go on unto perfection. That word leaving there in the Greek is aphiemi, and it means to lay aside, to leave, to let alone, to let go. And uh, the word let us go on is furrow in the Greek. It means to bear on, to bring forth, to carry on, to move on. And then the word perfection is teleotes, which means completeness or perfectness. So the Holy Spirit began to show me that Christian maturity cannot and will not be reached unless there is first a leaving or a letting go of some things in order to obtain to the next level or obtain the next level. And he showed me that the reason many in the body of Christ today, that uh, the reason why they are still babes when they should be mature in the faith is because they're still holding on to things that they should have let go of years ago. Are you hearing what's being said here? Many are not mature in the faith because they're still holding on to things that they should have let go of years ago. So I ask you, have you matured in the faith? Have you grown in grace and faith since you believed? Or are you still a babe struggling to gain victory? So my question to you, if that's the case, that you're still a babe, my question to you is, what are you holding on to? Is it a sin or a false doctrine or maybe a past failure or a past hurt? Or it may be that uh, not so much that you're holding on to something considered bad or evil. Uh, in Hebrews 6, 1, Paul told the recipients of this letter to leave the principles of the doctrine of Christ. That was a good thing. These are the fundamental doctrines of Christianity. But holding on to it was hindering their growth. And they still found themselves as babes, needing milk and not strong meat, and being unskillful in the word of righteousness. And like so many today, you may be holding on to a past experience with God or a move of God. Maybe you experienced uh, the glory of God in the past, and you're holding on to that. And because of it, uh, you have grown complacent with what you have. You think, why? I had that experience like as though you have arrived and therefore you're not pursuing greater growth in the grace and knowledge of God. You're hanging on to an experience or a move of God. Hebrews 6 1 is telling you that there must be a leaving of the old to gain the new. There must be a leaving of any smug attitude that you know everything you need to know or you're just satisfied where, you're pres where you presently are. The truth of the matter is this, that if you're not growing or maturing, you are still a babe. Sad but true, many are. Now we get a picture of this leaving in order and then let us go on 
unto perfection. We get a picture of this leaving and going on in Genesis 12, 4, where Abram, the Lord had spoken unto Abram. It says, so Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Abram took Sarai his wife and Lot his brother's son and all their substance that they had gathered and the souls that they had gotten in Haran and they went forth to go into the land of Canaan and into the land of Canaan they came. So it says of Abram that he departed and then he went forth. He departed, he went forth. We see a picture of Hebrews 6, 1 here of leaving and let us go on unto perfection in Abram's life. It's a picture of maturity in faith and growth in grace. And you could spell it out or say it in this way. He surrendered when he left. He surrendered something. At first he surrendered his native land. Then he surrendered his family. Then he was asked to surrender Ishmael. Then finally, he was asked to surrender Isaac. And each surrender was followed by increased spiritual wealth. So Hebrews 6, 1 is telling us, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. What are those principles of the doctrine of Christ? Well, they are the first principles, the elements or the rudiments of Christianity. They're the doctrines pertaining to the beginning of the Christian life. They're the set of truths that are laying at the foundation of Christian doctrine. They lay a foundation in your faith. But here the, the writer which, who I believe is Paul is saying leaving the principles that word leaving again is aphiemi and it's lay aside let them go let alone cease in other words cease to continue in the state of being babes who must be fed with milk the lowest doctrines of the gospel when you should be capable of understanding the highest doctrines. Leave them alone. Now he wasn't saying lose them, despise them, forget them. He was saying lay them up in your hearts. Lay them as the foundation of your profession. But then go on and build upon them. Leave off or behind as a builder leaves the foundation to the superstructure to go and build on to that superstructure. And it's all with a view to advance to something higher and to go on to the contemplation of higher doctrines. The Chronological Life Application Study Bible said this, certain basic teachings are essential for all believers to understand. These basics include the importance of faith, the foolishness of trying to be saved by good deeds, the meaning of baptism and spiritual gifts, and the facts of resurrection and eternal life. To go on to maturity in our understanding, we need to move beyond, but not away from, Move beyond, but not away from, the basic teachings to a more complete understanding of the faith. Mature Christians should be teaching new Christians the basics. Then, acting on what they know, the mature will, leave, will learn even more from God's Word. Now, when we look at Dake's Annotated Reference Bible, we see that uh, Dakes offers two things that manifest Christian maturity. First of all, he says the first step is to leave the first principles, to cease to remain in a state of babes. And then secondly, go on to perfection. Never rest until you are an adult capable of taking strong meat 
of being a teacher and of exercising all senses in righteousness. Okay, so therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, the, uh, Paul here says, let us go on. Let us go on. That's, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the Greek word furrow. And this should be our motto. Let us go on. We should bear it continually in our mind. Let us go on. In other words, bear yourself forward. And this implies active exertion. P press on. Be carried on. Intimating uh, such a progress. And this, is, uh, this idea is gotten out of uh, the biblical illustrator. Be carried on. It's intimating such a kind of progress as a ship master makes when it's under sail. Be borne along as a ship driven by the wind. Let us go on like a ship that's driven by the wind. Be carried on with full bent of your minds and affections, with utmost endeavors of your whole souls. Now, uh, what they're saying here is that you've long uh, abode long enough by the shore. So hoist your sails and launch into the deep. It's time to launch into the deep and see what God has for you. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. Go on to higher attainments. Don't linger among the elementary truths, but climb higher and higher in knowledge. Advance. Go on to understand greater things. Trap commentary says, be carried on as with a force, breaking through all impediments, aiming at the highest pitch, eyeing the best patterns. Let us go on unto perfection. What did Paul mean there? He meant the more advanced principles of the gospel, the higher mysteries, the more perfect knowledge of things, to a higher state of knowledge and holiness, to higher lessons. The Abbot commentary said, said it this way, to ad the advanced state of religious attainment and higher truths appropriate to it. Let us go on to more elevated Christian doctrine, to holier living, to maturity in the knowledge and obedience of the gospel. Not just knowledge, knowing, but the obedience, doing what it says. Be a doer of the word, mature in that. John, Joseph Sutcliffe's commentary said, it is a principle con excuse me, it is a principle constantly maintained that our progress in grace should be associated with our knowledge of the truth. You will not progress in grace unless you have a knowledge of the truth. The lips of a Christian should be fountains of wisdom and grace. He should not be always fed with milk when he ought to be a teacher of others. Let me ask you, are your lips uh, fountains of wisdom and grace? If not, then you need to grow up. You need to mature in that area. The writings of F.B. Hall said, let us go on unto perfection. Take these words, let us go on as a motto and bear them continually in mind. For just as a cyclist must go on if he would keep on, so we must advance if our Christianity is to be much more than a worthless name. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. The pulpit commentary offered this. They said that the goal uh, yet to be attained in the Christian can be described as a duty. 
It's a duty of pressing on unto perfection. And the duty is twofold. First of all, it requires as a means the maturity in biblical knowledge. This is the means that you advance beyond the elementary principles unto higher and deeper truths of the oracles of God. This is the means. Now the end where you're headed is the full development of your spiritual life where truth must be expressed in life and practice. In other words, you become a doer of what you know and believe. Okay, so Hebrews 6, 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. And then Paul says in verse 3, And this will we do if God permit. And this will we do. This is an excellent resolution that he expresses here. And this should be our resolution, especially we're starting a new year for the new year. And this will we do. We will really, certainly, constantly do this. We will go on to perfection and so much the more diligently. Barnes Note describes it as this. We will make advances toward a higher state of knowledge and piety. We will go on to make higher attainments. Is that your resolution? And this will we do. And then he adds an important condition here. If God permit, this denotes total dependence upon God. In reference to anything we undertake, it is proper to recognize our entire dependence upon God. Because even in the case of good resolutions, we cannot carry them into effect except through God, who works in us to will and to do of his good pleasure. This will we do if God permit, if the Lord will work his grace in us, if he gives life and ability, if he imparts his Holy Spirit to us, if he will favor our efforts and crown them with success. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. And this will we do if God permit. Let's pray. Father, we thank you and praise you for your word that builds us up and establishes us and strengthens us and shows us where we are weak or lacking or wanting. And Father, we just thank you for your Holy Spirit who is faithful to shine the light on those areas. And we ask you now for an immeasurable degree of your grace, Lord, that you would pour out your grace upon us, that we as your people will mature in the faith, that we will advance to higher attainments, that we will progress, we will go on, Father, we will not stay where we're at, but that we will move forward, we will move forward and go on and mature and advance and increase. Lord, we ask you to forgive us for settling as being babes in Christ when we should be mature teachers of the faith. We ask you to help us now, Lord, by your grace and by your spirit. And we receive all that you have for us in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.